Ever since I got my BMW i3, I have been fascinated by battery and solar power. And as a result, I built what I believe to be the best portable power station on a budget that can actually charge my EV. This setup has a five kilowatt hour battery and can output three kilowatts of power continuously. Here it is charging my car completely independent of the grid. In fact, it can power almost anything and it will cost you about half compared to a pre-built system. Let me show you how I built it. And I'm really sorry for the cicadas in this video. I'll try to suppress it as much as I can, but they've been doing this for a couple of weeks now and I don't think it will be stopping anytime soon. We'll start with the inverter and battery specs as this is the major reason why I picked these two devices, other than the price of course. The inverter we will be using is this EG4 3000 EHV-48 off-grid inverter, which I bought for $700 including tax shipped to my house. It's not nearly as large as I imagined it would be and it comes with lots of accessories, so it's definitely a good value. The specs are also very impressive as it can continuously output 3000 watts, which is great. But more importantly, you can plug in 5000 watts worth of solar into this unit. Also, the high voltage input is 500 volts DC, which makes it very easy to just put your solar panels in a series and not have to worry about combiner boxes. Making this inverter great for scaling up to a much bigger system in the future. As the name suggests, this is a 48 volt system, so we will need a 48 volt battery. I went with this EG4 Life Power 4 48 volt lithium battery which is, as far as I'm concerned, the best deal for a smart battery with grade A lithium iron phosphate cells on the market. Wow, this thing's heavy. I paid $1,200 total for this one, and it's by far the most expensive piece of this setup. You can go for cheaper off-brand batteries without communication, but if you want a stable and reliable system that will last 10 plus years, this is the way to go. This battery has the capacity of 5.12 kilowatt hours and can be charged and discharged at 100 amps, which is plenty for what we need. All right, so we have our main components, which I bench tested for a while to make sure it actually worked as I thought it would. Now it's time to make it a little more presentable as well as make it portable, for which we will need a few more items. First, I got this cheapo hand card from Harbor Freight, mostly because it's small, foldable, light, and well, it's rated for 150 pounds, so it should just fit everything. It was also under $30, which is great for the budget. This is how it unfolds, and as you can see, it becomes much bigger and should work perfectly for our purpose. And now we can put the battery in. This is quite heavy, so if you need to get help uh, with this part, I would recommend it. This is like 90 pounds. Of course, I will also need something to secure this battery as well as the rest of the components to the card. So straps, bolts, screws, and zip ties is what I will be using today. Honestly, I thought I was gonna need two. I don't. Super secure. That work really well. Easy. Attaching the inverter will be a little more difficult as there isn't much space left, but I wanted a small footprint, so we'll have to make this work. There's definitely not a lot of space between the two, but that should be fine. And my idea at the moment is to line it up just like this and drill through the handlebar here, just right there. So then I can put a bolt through and secure it that way. Just gotta clean up the holes now. Quick trip to the store and two dollars later I have the appropriate bolts and nuts that will work for this. So let's test fit it. I'm gonna take the inverter and the second one. Looks like it's gonna work. Now it's time to wire everything in. I'm gonna start with this four gauge wire that came included. So we're gonna put that in just right here and have that ready. And then we'll do the rest of it.
Very simple, nothing to it really. Next, we will need a good way to plug in our system in order to charge the battery. And the best and cheapest way is to get a good quality power strip. I got this commercial electric one from Home Depot and then I cut the wire in half. The socket part, which is this, will be our input plug. So here's the wire. We have the green, the black, and the white. So for AC in, this is our green. Line is gonna be our black wire and N is the neutral, which is gonna be our white wire. Perfect. The other half of the power strip will be our distribution box of sorts, as well as provide some protection as it has built-in surge protector up to 2100 joules. It also has built-in USB-C and USB-A, and of course a bunch of uh, outlets so we can plug in our devices. If you will be charging your EV from this like I will, it's probably a good idea to wire in a dedicated plug for it. So I will be using another extension cord that I cut in half. Next, I'm going to combine these two ends and then put them for the AC out. So we're gonna have our power strip as well as plug for the car charger. It has to be of good quality and the internal wires must be at least 12 to 14 gauge depending on the charger you will be using for the car. In this case, this is a 14 gauge, so you probably don't wanna go over like 1.3 kilowatts when charging and definitely don't wanna be plugging it into this power strip as you might have other devices plugged in and it may overload uh, the wiring in here. All the greens are gonna go right here, so we'll loosen it up, put the greens in, and then tighten it again. Test each one. Perfect, all of them are secured in there. Next, we'll do the black wire, which is gonna be our line. Both are secure. All right, so our input and output stuff is now complete. Of course, if you're gonna be using a two kilowatt charger, so like 15 to 20 amp, charge it, then you probably want to get a higher quality, thicker extension cord and chop that in half. Lastly, we will need solar inputs. Technically, you can just wire in solar panels directly to the inverter, but I would recommend taking two short lengths of wire and adding solar connectors like this to make it easier. I will be using this wire right here just because I made this earlier and I don't need to remake it. But if you wanted to make some, this entire kit is only 20 bucks which you can get on Amazon. I'll have the links in the description and it comes with connectors that you can crimp yourself. Very easy to do, no problem at all. But yeah, I'm just gonna be using these because well, I already have them. And I'm gonna strip off the wire like that. Same thing on this one. And they're ready to go. On the solar panel itself, this will be the positive. So connecting to the inverter, this is gonna be my negative input so that the negative goes into this one right here. So this will be right there, just like that. Of course, you want to size the wire based on how much solar input you're gonna have. Check out the charts and I'll have some links in the description on how to figure that out, but that's not very difficult. And that's it, all of our wiring is now done. Let's put this back on the hand cart. All right, let's do this. Once again, if you can get some help doing this, it will be much easier, but it's definitely doable with one person. That's not going anywhere. For this bottom part, to make the inverter not flap around, I'm just gonna put a zip tie to hold it in place. It doesn't really need to be structural or anything. It just literally has to hold it in place so it doesn't move around. So yeah, this will do just fine. Just like that. Perfect, it's solid now. So now, of course, we have a few wires coming out of the inverter. We have AC in. We're gonna put that to the side for now. We have our uh, plug for the car charger. I'm gonna put that to the side. And then, of course, we have this power strip. And I found a really good place to put it, which may not even require anything else. So it's just gonna slide right in there. Probably put just one zip tie right here. And that's it, we have the switch on the side, perfect. We have our USB ports at the top and we still have plenty of outlets left right here. And here's how everything is looking so far. We have all of our wiring done, well, except where you just have to connect the battery, but that's gonna be the last step. And we just have a few wires left right here. These, I mean, these could be left loose if you want, if you're gonna be using them all the time, or we can zip tie them to maybe this part right here. 
keep them out of the way. But now let's actually connect the battery and power this on. There is plenty of wire here and ideally we would cut this to size, but I don't know if this is gonna be my permanent installation. So I will just connect it as is and hide the wire up there and get these into position. Make sure the inverter as well as the battery breaker are both off before you connect the battery to the inverter. This has to be fairly tight, so use whatever you need to make it nice and tight. And we'll put the cover back on. And we can do the positive side now. Excellent. Just to hide all of this ugly wiring, I'm gonna put this cover back on. It came, of course, with the inverter. Let's power this on. First, I'm gonna switch the breaker on on the battery. Give it a couple of seconds so it powers on. And now we can actually power on the inverter. There is a power switch on the back here so I can access it from the other side. All right. Look at that, the inverter is now on. It's telling me that there is no uh, solar input, which makes sense. There's nothing plugged in into this unit. So as you can see, it is completely disconnected from anything and it is powered on. One last thing we have to do is establish communication between the inverter and the battery, and that's gonna be done using this cable. So we're gonna plug in this USB part into uh, the actual inverter, and then this ethernet looking port goes into the battery. So let me plug that in right now. Probably could have done it before I put the inverter on here, but I forgot. Okay, and now we can power on the device and configure our inverter. To change the controller settings, we're gonna go into the menu, which is done by just holding the enter button for a few seconds, and now we are in the actual menu. The first thing we want to change is the first option, which you, as you can see, I have set to SBU, which is solar battery utility. That means it will use solar first for output, then battery, and then only then it will use utility. Very important if you're trying to do what I'm trying to do here. The next option is option five. Option five is the type of battery. So if you're using the EG4 battery like I'm using in this video, you want it to be at LI4. This will be the EG4 battery protocol. This will do all of the communication for you and it will configure everything else for you as well as far as voltages, cutoff voltages and things like that. So very important you set it to this unless you're using a different battery for which you will then have to you know, do your own settings and set up the voltages and things like that. But this makes it really, really easy. Next option is gonna be option eight, which is the voltage for the output. I'm gonna set mine to 120 volts because I want as much voltage as possible. If you set it to 110, it'll work just fine, but you will probably not get as much output and you may need thicker wires because you will have more amperage going through the wires. The next option nine, we want to set it to 60 Hertz because that's what we use in US here. If you're somewhere else and you have 50 Hertz, then set it to that. And then of course, we're going to go to 11, which is the utility charge rate. You don't want to set this higher than what your outlet can handle. I'm gonna set mine to 10 amps because this is pretty safe for pretty much any outlet you're gonna plug in inside your house or the garage. Most outlets are rated to you know, handle at least 10 to 15 amps. So yeah, this is a safe option. The last setting we want to change is 16, which is the charger source priority. This I suggest setting to solar first. That means it's gonna use your solar to charge the battery first. And only if the solar is not available, it will then switch to utility. Of course, you have other options. You can change it to S and U, which will be solar and utility at the same time. You can do it if you like. You can do solar only, and you can of course do uh, this one, which is gonna be utility charges first, and solar will only be used when battery is not available. But I want to prioritize using solar as that's kind of the idea for me. So use solar first, if that's not available, then use the utility. There are a few other settings to learn and adjust as you need them, but this should get you started. Also, it's important to understand that if you do not have enough solar and the battery is fully depleted, your system will go into bypass mode if you have it plugged into the grid. That means the inverter will use the grid to power the load. In theory, that's awesome. However, that also means that it has to be plugged into a socket that can supply the appropriate current. If you're just powering simple items, that should be no problem. But if you're pulling 3000 watts, which this inverter is capable of, then the input must be able to do so as well. That's about 25 amps and most outlets are definitely not rated for that. 
There isn't a way to disable bypass mode as far as I can tell. So when powering heavy loads, make sure the system is not plugged in. Once the load is turned off, the battery can be then recharged and luckily we can set the charging current with option 11 as mentioned earlier. If it's a standard plug, set it to 10 amps as that's what most outlets can handle easily. All right, now it's finally time to show you how it will actually charge my car. I have this very cheap but very good actually uh, EV charger. So I'm going to plug that into our extension cord that we have set up for EV charging. Just plug that in. We can see it's powered on. So the green light came on. Perfect. Now I'm just going to plug this into the car. And that's it. We are charging. As you can see, nothing else is plugged in into anywhere. So we are charging straight from this battery. Let me bring you in a little bit closer and I'll show you how much wattage we're actually using. So we're starting with input of zero. So as you can see, there's no input from AC, nothing, no input from a PV. So no solar input, nothing. Yet we are still charging the battery. We're gonna get to output in just a second. So we have a 44% load at the moment on the inverter, which is 1.35 kilowatts. So we're charging at 1,350 watts an hour that we're putting into this BMW i3. Now, that's definitely not a lot, but that just gives you an idea of what this can power. Your fridge probably uses like 150 watts. So you can plug in your fridge, you can plug in whatever you want in the house in case of an emergency, and this will do the job. So that's kind of what I built this for. It will be my emergency use as well as charge my car when I want to type of thing. As you can see, the car is still plugged in and charging, but I will turn off the inverter for just a minute as well as the battery so I can plug in my solar and then we'll see what kind of input we can get from just those four panels. That's in, now we can turn on the battery and turn on the inverter. And now we can see that the solar panels are now plugged in. Let's see how much input we're getting. It's actually pretty cloudy right now, but it should be something. All right, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna get full spawn today. It's still partly cloudy and we are generating about 400 to 450 watts just from solar. It gets up to about 800 and really good sun when it's, the sun is right above the solar panels, but that's still pretty good. So a third of what we're putting in the car is coming from the sun. That also means that even with those four panels that I have in my backyard, just leaning against the house, not at the right angle or anything, it would only take about a day to fully recharge this battery. And then you have five kilowatt hours of power available to use. Just to give you an idea why it's not charging at full capacity, well, each panel is 300 watts. So it should be 1200 that we are getting from uh, these panels. However, I have this big tree that's covering, as you can see, like half of that panel. So that really doesn't help and the sun is definitely behind the house. When the panels are not covered or anything, we would be getting closer to eight, nine to even a thousand watts uh, just from these four panels. Of course, the angle is not correct on these either. So that will be something I'll do in the future. I'll mount them properly so we get the best results possible. Now, I will not say that this was easy and everybody should do it as it's not super straightforward. There is a lot to this and it's important to understand what you are doing so that you are safe. But if you find projects like this fun, then this is a great way to get into this. I'm hoping to make this a series where I gradually built up the system until I can fully charge my i3 with solar as well as power other devices. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.